Hello everybody, how are you all doing today? This is the second time I'm filming this because I am a little bit emotional today so my brain is overcompensating by being cringy and then I cringe at myself and then I just I just hate everything I do so Today, what are we doing? Um, duh, we're reacting to yet another episode of my past travels to Japan while waiting for the Japanese borders to reopen Education is not tourism the hashtag the website for any news that you may need i am getting people directly dming me for any info about the borders and all i can say is to go to that website and get some information or go to davide rossi's twitter to get some information because i'm not much more informed than anyone out there just because my face is at the top of an article about stranded international students doesn't mean that i know anything else so that's my recommendation to you guys if you want any information whether you're one of the stranded people or whether you just want to be informed on the situation go to education is not tourism dot com or look up the hashtag especially on twitter of education is not tourism where was i before for that yes we are reacting to another episode to help us with the weight of not being able to enter japan so re-watching from the 2017 series and we had just finished with the tokyo portion of the series finishing with the imperial garden which i think was a very good ending um now we're moving on to osaka it's a very short episode it's called settling into my airbnb in osaka um might be a small episode to watch but i feel like i have a lot to say or i think i may have a lot to say so uh, we'll see about that maybe everything that i want to say is already said in that episode and i'll just have to say like mm, yeah that's right uh, or i'll have not given the details that i want to give uh, could be good information if you're looking for airbnbs i keep saying airbnbs airbnb Airbnbs in Japan, even though obviously a lot of things have happened with Airbnbs in Japan since 2017, like <laughs> I think 2018, 2019, there were like legislation problems or admin problems with Airbnb in Japan, then it got resolved. Now there's the COVID, so I don't know if my advice is still valid, but Nonetheless, I'll be rewatching this, giving my two cents on the whole ordeal because I think that was actually the first time I use an Airbnb abroad, like, ever. So, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting experience. Uh, but before I get ahead of myself, as usual, uh, let's just let's just dive into it. Um, enough of the rambling. This is the left side. No, that's <sighs> my brain. Right side, please. Thank you. And let's start with the episode. So, settling into my Airbnb in Osaka. It was a very, very um, intense moment for that portion of my trip. Oh yeah, clearly I'm leaving Toko. Those are two of the hosts I, uh, and an artist that I'm fo actually following still on Instagram because I really love her art. Toko was a really nice place to be. Maybe not for as long as I had stayed. Maybe next time I'll take like a room to myself. But it was really, really nice for a first time abroad by myself it was the right choice for me and i i will keep recommending it to other people matane matane toko i think this is my first time in a shinkansen like the high speed bullet train from tokyo to osaka um i don't remember much about the ticket buying procedure but i had a jr pass which means that my trip was covered. What I did was just show my JR pass at the um, reservation booth thing, like not the automated machines. And uh, most of the time the clerks did not speak English, but they did have like this 
information sheets where you could just point at what you wanted if you wanted to try and get a window seat because obviously the advantage with a JR Pass is that you can get a reserved seat which honestly was the best thing in the world so you could try and get a window seat if it was available um, I think smoking, non-smoking is still an option on Shinkansen not sure, not a smoker so I'll I didn't really, inf uh, I didn't really look that up. Um, I think you could choose where on the train you wanted to sit. Like they had a diagram of the train, and you could just point to which seat you wanted. Uh, also, keep in mind this was in 2017, so my memory is a little bit blurry. I remember that since I had my luggage, uh, my big blue suitcase that I was lugging from Tokyo to Osaka, and obviously all the rest of my stuff. Uh, I try to get a seat as far uh, as close to the back of the carriage because at the back of the carriage there's a small space uh, where it was easy to just like jam my suitcase in. I think there's also a dedicated, like an actual dedicated place for luggage where you can actually put them on shelves and secure them. I think that's like a somewhere in the Shinkansen where you can do that but I've never figured out where if it's at the front or the back or the middle but I always may do with the little area behind just keep in mind that every time the Shinkansen is gonna make a turn there's a good chance your luggage might like <laughs> fly out that has happened to me so you have to keep that in mind the best way is to have the seat right in front of it and that way when you feel the train swerving you can just catch it <laughs> But what happens, happens, and um, yeah, JR Pass, Mwah. I have no clue what it would have cost me without it. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed up this little segment here because I feel like I say a lot, and if you really want all the details and info, it's best just to watch the video. But I do have a lot to say about that Airbnb and the whole transition from Tokyo to Osaka. I'm not sure how I'm gonna start. Maybe I'll start with the transition from Tokyo the bustling capital city of Japan to Osaka which there's a point where you can see me on the balcony uh, looking out on the street and it is completely empty and to be honest it was a little bit of a shock to me um, I can't really explain it uh, mostly because I don't properly remember it it was in 2017 but it was like it was too quiet I'd come from this big city, super animated, loud, loads of people, neon signs, like so much activity to a very like more like a city with a more industrial feel, like more grey. Keep in mind I'm not near Dotonbori and Namba and everything, I have a few subway rides from there if I can remember that clearly. So it was a little bit of a shock and also I had like, maybe not the exhaustion, but like this feeling that I just come from this dorm in Tokyo to this quiet Airbnb all by myself. <laughs> That's what I remember. Also, um, I do remember that I got very lost finding the Airbnb. Since I wasn't meeting the host, I got all the instructions uh, to get there and how to retrieve the key and everything uh, after I reserved via Airbnb. Uh, I was left with my own devices to try and find it and I remember that I got so lost. I'd actually forgotten how lost I got until re-watching this where I got this little flash because I to this day cannot figure out Japanese addresses so I couldn't use the maps. I was solely relying on the notes I had probably taken because I was very prepared for that trip and the photos from the host's letter where she was guiding me with the vending machines and I remember that I think because of the vending machines there were maybe two and that's why I got confused and I headed to the wrong building first so I was like that looks nothing like the entrance of the building I was thought I was supposed to go to. But clearly in the end I found it, I just don't remember how or how long it took but I do remember that I was very scared because it was so empty and I was like what am I gonna do if I can't find this place, I don't know if I can contact the host or you know blah 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 but I found it. <laughs> it was just a really stressful moment. So um, I'm trying to do things in order. The Airbnb itself was so small 
but like comfortably small. Um, if I open my suitcase wide, it took up the whole like main area, like next to the bed and the table. I, I had to move the table to open my suitcase, that's how small it was. Um, otherwise, I don't have a lot to say about like the quality of the Airbnb was fine. I don't remember much. I slept fine. It wasn't too hot, too cold. The, maybe like the ventilation in the bathroom was quite loud. That's something I can remember. I remember the bed being quite firm, like almost like this really thin, non-bouncy couch, but I slept fine from what I can remember. One thing that really bugged me about the Airbnb, probably the only thing that really- actually, I'm thinking of another one, but let's do that one first. The main thing that annoyed me about that Airbnb is that it did not smell nice. <laughs> there was this open drain at the very entrance where I think is a space where you can put a washing machine. That was- the hole was just covered up with some plastic and you could smell the drain pretty strongly throughout the apartment the host had put a lot of these little uh, spray things dispensers like automatic that just went off but that just created this strange smell in the flat uh, of this mixed thing and also every time one of those little spray things went off it made a small sound which always startled me in the end i remember finding all the, I, I call it dispenser, but you see what I mean, right? I took all the dispensers and put them around the hole because I just needed the smell to be focused in one area. <laughs> that was probably the main thing and it's not the worst thing in the world. I was hardly ever there. I just went there to sleep and maybe have some breakfast and I think maybe one day I stayed in, which was the day of the typhoon, <laughs> which is also a memory of me having the bed right next to the window, which was kind of scary of the day of that typhoon, my first typhoon experience. That's later down the line. The other thing I didn't like about the Airbnb um, is that the Wi-Fi sucked big time. Like, no way I'm gonna watch any YouTube on that Wi-Fi, but I mean, first world problems, yes, boohoo, I can't watch YouTube, but also I couldn't really check my emails, I had to rely on the f my data on my phone and I didn't want to run out because this was still like the middle of my trip, I still had like a lot of locations to go, I didn't want to use all my data, didn't know how to recharge, so <laughs> that wasn't the deal I thought that I it was a shame that the Wi-Fi, I couldn't come home and check my emails and, you know, check like locations and stuff. I remember a few times in Osaka, I tried to go to some Starbucks to get some Wi-Fi and stuff like that. It was kind of a frustrating point, but those are just details. I think that's all I want to say about that transition episode. Yeah, that's what I remember from the Shingensen experience. That's what I remember from the transition from the talk the transition from Tokyo to Osaka, the first time in an Airbnb, good experience overall. There's still about three minutes left in this episode where I think I just walk around Dotonbori for the first time, just, you know, scope the area out before I really start the Osaka part of my journey. Hey guys, just went for a walk in the Dotonbori area, which is probably the main area, touristy, uh, commercially. As you can see behind Behind me we have a Glico uh, guide slash mascot that everybody is taking a picture in front of so I'll probably go do the same. I'm just having a quick walk today, it's already the end of the day so tomorrow I will officially go out and visit Osaka. Follow me! to get that girl's attention and I was really happy when she waved back for some reason it was like yay she saw me down here so yeah I had a quick walk around Dotonbori not much I would definitely go back a little bit later I don't remember which episode but I do go back and make the most of Dotonbori because it's a really it's an area that you have to see it's an area that you have to experience for sure for the food for the ambiance for the huge giant uh, panels I can't find the right word you, probably know what I mean, I hope. I think that's all I have to say about this episode. I hope some of the information I gave you was insightful and some things that you can reuse and others are just 
funny nostalgic anecdotes hopefully made you smile uh, before you have to get on with your day or during your lunch break or before a good night's sleep who knows um just hope it entertained you a little bit it's definitely nice for me to look back and have fun with all of this um still have a lot of hope hope that i'm not um admitting to myself that i have about still going to japan next month but we shall see all we can do is <laughs> wait <laughs> I was looking for something smart to say, but honestly, all we can do is just move on with our day, day by day, minute by minute, you know, second by second, and just wait um, and mentally prepare for a plan B and actually start preparing that plan B, maybe. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because I know I spoke a lot during this episode, which was a short one, but I had a lot to say about it. So I hope you guys are well. I'll see you in the next one. Not sure what I do, but I might be seeing the aquarium in the next one. So if that's the case, I'm very excited about that. So I'll see you then. Um, I hope you're well. I already said that. And uh, yeah, I'll word you all. Bye.